Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and today we'll be looking at more Overwatch League stuff. In particular, yesterday, there was a match between the Houston Outlaws and Seoul Dynasty. And I've got to say that a lot of times, actually, I feel like the Overwatch League sort of hypes up match matches unnecessarily. They'll take like just a, a slightly above average match and they'll hype it up to this crazy thing. But this time, this was actually a really hype match. In fact, I think that the hosts and such at Overwatch League plus the casters actually even downplayed this a little bit because this was really, really a cool match. Uh, if you're if you're paying attention to betting lines, it was like 80-20 odds in favor of Soul Dynasty. Uh, not that I'm recommending you bet or anything like that, but uh, just never take 80 20 odds on any match in overwatch league that's just silly uh, but anyway that being said soul was expected to win over outlaws for sure but if we take a look right here we'll see that we're in li Zhang tower and it's tied up one to one and in fact it's actually completely tied up at this point it's two to two outlaws have two maps and the dynasty has two maps it's just down to this final map and it's tied up one to one. These are best of threes, remember here in Overwatch League when, when it comes to these control point maps. So Houston Outlaws now have a chance to take it all against all odds, against their 80-20 odds. And, uh, I, you know, I watched this live and I was really excited to see who was going to win. Personally, I was rooting for Soul Dynasty. But, uh, you know, I would have been very happy to see Outlaws win just because of how it was. Now in the title, you already know that the Outlaws lose. Right, the Outlaws lose, but let me tell you, they should have won, man. They should have won, so let's take a look. We're in the Control Center branch of Li Zhang Tower, and we're going to see right off the bat that our teams have uh, really different compositions here. If we take a look at the top, we'll be able to see that Houston is running more of a divey type of composition, not full-on dive because of the Junkrat will prevent that, but we do have our Tracer, Winston, Diva. Pretty standard like block of a dive composition with Jake on the junk rat. So it's not super super divey, it just we'll call it a mobile type of team. A mobile uh, sort of team, I think, would be more appropriate. In the meantime, Soul Dynasty is very much a fighting team. It's just uh, we're gonna line up, we have tanks, we have Zumba on Zarya, we have Miro on Reinhardt for the shields in the front, plus we can have uh, our McCree. And then, of course, we have Junkrat, because Junkrat's really good on Control Center, and just kind of good in general. So, Soul Dynasty, they want to just come up and fight you, and have a big, like, extended fight where both teams just punch each other until someone dies. That's what Soul Dynasty wants, where Outlaws want to be a bit cuter with it. So, let's see how we do. Now, Jake is going to be a very important part of breaking this in, because the way they're going to try to use Jake is they're going to try to maybe soften up the back line a little bit, get some damage out, and then when Jake gets enough damage, he can see the health bars. He'll be like, all right, go get him, guys. And then Cool Matt, Muma, and Clockwork on the dive heroes. Well, well, go get him. But we see right off the bat that they're actually, and surprisingly, if we get it, yeah, there we go. There's a better angle. The Outlaws, despite having a weaker straight-up fight team, are actually pushing the Soul Dynasty back on this first point. And if you are a divey mobile type of team, and you're actually winning straight up against a frontline DPS tank team, then you should really be winning the fight. Like, they're definitely at an advantage right now. Jake is still focusing mostly on the... No, notice that there's a Reinhardt over here that's kind of weak. It's, he's behind the wall, so you can't see him. But there is a Reinhardt. You can kind of see the little tip of his health bar here. Uh, but Jake is going to be continuing to focus that strategy of, let's focus on the weak, squishy backline characters. And then if I get some good hits, I'll call it out to my Tracer and such, and they'll go and they'll go kill him, right? Uh, and he even does get flooded very, very low. The problem with this at this point is that uh, despite weakening and softening people up, the chances of you actually killing someone like this Junkrat very, very low. And we see that Coolmat dies. So we, we were in an advantageous position where the the Reinhardt had a low shield. He was kind of out of position. The back line had to deal with some healing themselves. So I think capitalizing on this and going for the tanks uh, at this particular point would have been pretty good for the Outlaws. But instead, we have Coolmat that goes down, unfortunately. So they lost their mech very early on. And notice Zumba almost dies. Miro, at a certain point, his health was lower. He almost died. I think that if Outlaws had gone a little bit harder, they were a little bit too scared to engage the tanks. They were really, really focused on, okay, we need to go and backstab the Junkrat. We need to backstab the McCree, backstab the Zenyatta, uh, to the point where Zumba really just took over this match. Like, Zumba, 
killed and melted everyone. Uh, he was basically like the main DPS hero, and M Miro did quite well as well. So Clockwork tries to go for a last ditch effort after losing his entire team, well, half of his team. It doesn't work out, and that's going to be it for the Outlaws. So, I, I, mean, I mean, even look where Miro is right now. Miro's at half health, despite that after the fight went t super terribly. So if they'd just gone a little bit harder, uh, and Jake had been angling the launcher a little bit lower towards the tanks i think that outlaws really had that fight they they were looking absolutely fantastic because like i said they were a divey team who was actually pushing up and winning the tank battle against a fighting team they should have had that absolutely i think but it's pretty hard right it's pretty hard clockwork's about to switch off to the soldier and that's because i mean you're dealing with a junk rat in the back line a mccree in the back line it's i mean you have a zarya to shield people going for that dive is difficult I think that Soul definitely had an advantage in team composition. So Clockwork is going to switch off to the Soldier to make things a little bit more uh, nice when it comes to these straight-up fights. But here they come. The Outlaws are going to have a fantastic start to this fight because, boom, Clockwork, the sniper from above. You see the, the pick, the switch is already working quite well, it looks like. Took them by surprise. He's going to take out Toby. Boom. That should be the coup d'etat right there. And in fact, it doesn't even stop there because we see a nice Junkrat mine get the Reinhardt, the Reinhardt out of place and Miro goes down as well. So at this point, the Soul Dynasty are down Toby. Goodbye and down Miro. Also, see you later. And it's a six versus four. Outlaws obviously looking fantastic, but everyone has ultimates. Rijay Hung used his his own ultimate. Zumba used his Graviton. I don't think it got anything. It's off the screen. They don't show it, but I don't think it got anything. Fleta, though, his tire ba winds up backstabbing Clockwork here. And Clockwork goes down. But it's okay. He gets res. However, it's a bit of a problem, all right? D despite Clockwork getting res, this is actually quite a big problem. Because, like I said, this is the part. We have uh, Ruja Hong mitigating all damage to this point. So, Houston Outlaws can't do any damage. When the ultimate ends, Clockwork dies. So they still can't really do any damage. If you look at this team composition, Jake is on Junkrat. That's a little bit inconsistent, right? Sure, he could land the shots, but he winds up not in this particular case. So they have no damage still. In the meantime, Toby and Miro are, are march, march, marching up along back to the point. While Zumba <clears throat> is just sort of not dying because there's no damage. Now, finally, there's damage because the soldier is here. He can do things. He can shoot. And uh, there we go. The rocket. He was in Jake's melee range. And uh, things are still looking okay for outlaws. Not really amazing, uh, but, you know, okay at the very least. Munchkin takes a lot of damage. And, in fact, they get a fantastic trade here. They trade their dead diva, essentially. I mean, this guy, I mean, he's, he's a pilot diva, right? They trade their pilot diva for Munchkin, the McCree player, with the help of Boink. And here is where the Outlaws probably should have won. They probably should have won here um, because... So right now we have Jake, who... There we go. We can see his name better. Jake is very low, but he's up on the high ground above the point. I'll show it to you. Right here, this high ground. In fact, most of the Outlaws are sitting on this high ground right now, which is fantastic. And even though, even though the Junkrat's hurt... They can just heal him right back up, and they have a fantastic angle on all of the soul players who are down in this type of area. So right now, traded, it's five versus five. Both teams still have a mercy res, and the outlaws are in a, a better position. So this is the second time that they really deserve, they should be winning this fight, theoretically, right? But here is the key issue. You can't see it, but uh, boom, there we go, the res. This is really the issue here, because remember, the entire fight is over here. The entire fight is happening over there. That's where all of the outlaws are. So what Boink does is he flies all the way across the room to try to get up the pilot diva. Not a very strong resurrect target to begin with. I think it would have been okay if she was just dead. It's fine. She can be dead. It's not too big of a deal. And one of the few cases where you don't just auto-res everyone is Mercy, right? So you see that because Boink left, he dies very easily because he's out of position. But that's not all. Jake dies. Remember, Jake was hurt. If Jake was being healed... He would have been fine because he was relatively safe anyway. So uh, Boink could have saved Jake and saved himself. But instead, we're just going to get a pilot diva who's going to wind up doing nothing because she's a pilot. And she'll uh, <clears throat> she'll just sit over there doing not too much. In fact, she almost dies. Uh, and now, obviously, the outlaws are super hurting, right? They just have their three heroes left. Cool Matt's not a hero. So they all charge, rush down, try to get what they can, which is correct. When you're in a losing situation, you should just try to go and uh, kill them especially when you only have 60% left on the clock, like 40% uh, left on the clock. So Outlaws, because of that, wind up losing yet another fight 
that they probably should have won. At this point, I mean, like, Outlaws should have been at 73%. Dynasty should have been at, at 0%. They could have taken the entire series. This was so, so close for the Outlaws to take everything. And in fact, here they start pretty well again. Uh, you can see they they might they probably should have even won this fight as well They should have probably won all these fights based on how they start we have the mercy who's who uh, gets relatively low No ultimate to heal herself instantly with either Zumba gets very very uh, gets quite low right off the bat So Toby's going to be having to heal him for quite a long time and uh, Overall the outlaws are just pushing in they're shoving in they don't they don't have a terrible ultis advantage in fact clockwork even has his visor. So Clockwork here makes the mistake of doing the same thing over and over again, and he winds up going onto that high ground once again. It worked really well the first time, but the second time, you're not going to fool Fleta. Fleta was up there waiting with, uh, with, I mean, you can't kill him in melee range with mines. He's just going to sit up there, and there's no way. So they lose Clockwork, they lose their main form of DPS, so despite Outlaws getting a fantastic start to this fight, they're forced to back off once again. And here they don't have a lot of time left. We'll see this last fight as the Outlaws uh, actually wind up getting shut down. We have a really weird Winston shield here. That's not going to do them very many favors. So they charge in. They're, they're down ultimates. I mean, look, they have no ults against all the ults. And so, uh, you know, Dynasty has done a good job putting them in the position to just win the game at this point. Easy ult combo. And that's going to be it. So Outlaws, man, that was a really good match. That was really cool. I enjoyed it a lot watching this live, like I said. But in the end, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Well, the, the Outlaws, I mean, they were also missing some players as well. So I, I wonder what would have happened if Linkster was there and stuff, for example. But if you want to check out more Overwatch League action, of course, head over to overwatchleague.com where there are VODs. Uh, let me know what you thought of this. And if you want to see more in the future, as I was getting lots of comments saying, uh, do more analysis type of stuff. Uh, overall, I mean, I, I, really, I really don't really know the type of videos you guys want at this point because I feel like we've gone over most of the teaching type of stuff like I've kind of you can go into my archive and find pretty much any topic you want on overwatch for solo queue uh, so I know that people like the analysis of the overwatch league stuff and I know that a lot a lot of people like the commentary videos but some people don't maybe because they're just opinionated so I'm gonna make people mad either way but anyway I hope you all enjoyed let me know your opinion in the comments below uh, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Never forget to stay positive. I'll see you next time.